Hello everyone, thanks for joining my webinar here. Uh, I would like to thanks to Huawei Cloud for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge and experience. Um, today, so the topic that I would like to cover is actually blockchain and cloud technology inspired techno innovations and evolutions of traditional enterprise. Um, so, um, a little bit of introductions about myself. Uh, my name is Sylvester Lee. Uh, I'm the CEO of Verifizer. Verifizer is a, a blockchain application consultations and uh, development company. Right? So if you are looking for blockchain application development uh, uh, solutions, you can actually look for me. And uh, I'm also the CTO of a company from China called New Trust Chain. And I'm also the Executive Vice Chairman of Hong Kong International Blockchain and Financial Association. All right. Um, let's uh, proceed uh, to talk about this. All right. Um, so before I begin, uh, I would like to explain, you know, uh, what is blockchain because I'm, I actually uh, know that uh, some of you may not be familiar with what is blockchain and how blockchain work and how it can be applied to your uh, industry. So um, blockchain is actually a decentralized distributed ledger technology. Uh, you can treat it like a database and this database is being distributed to every party who actually interested to join uh, in your network. All right? And uh, this database is synchronized in real time and everyone who involved in this blockchain network has a copy of this database. And this database usually is stored with ledger or transactional data only. And um, it, it, can, it, it, it still has much difference compared to conventional database uh, because of the data format that it can be stored is very limited to transactional data. And uh, another attribute that um, blockchain uh, promote is decentralization, uh, which means multiple parties who own this database together we govern the data, all right? and we can uh, monitor and audit the data within this database, which means every one of you will have a copy of this data whoever interested in joining this blockchain network who want to get access to this uh, database. All right? And um, you know in the market, uh, everyone talk about Bitcoin and actually Bitcoin is not equal to blockchain, all right? Uh, blo blockchain is actually the technology underlying Bitcoin. So why everyone trusts Bitcoin is because uh, it has this uh, blockchain characteristic whereby this uh, ledger, the, the transactional data of a Bitcoin, are uh, being distributed to everyone who wants to use Bitcoin and it cannot be tampered because it's been uh, distributed and decentralized. And uh, how it cannot be tampered, I'll explain that you know, in the next slide. All right. So um, tamper proof. So how we actually make sure the data in the blockchain cannot be tampered. Firstly, first is let's understand the data structures of the blockchain. All right. So you treat the block like a page of ledger. So a page of ledger actually consists of all these uh, historical transactional data. And every block has the representations of IDs. All right? We use a method called hash algorithm to actually compute and uh, calculate the identifier of each block, all right, of each page. So um, whenever there's a data you want to modify in the block, the compute hash, the hash value will change. So every time um, you want to make a data in the, in, the, in the block, so the hash value will be changed. And eventually, if everyone, uh, I mean, the other person who has a copy of your database, and, uh, or maybe a copy of the block, and the hash value uh, the, the system itself actually will uh, identify and, cut and, and differentiate whether the, everyone who has the same copy of the data or not by uh, referring to this hash value, a, a kind of digital signature of the page. All right? 
and uh, how this chain work I mean you know um, every ledger you have a limit of data can be written in a page let's say it's a page of ledger you can write uh, maybe a hundred lines of transactions and if you have more than that you need to write into uh, another page of your ledger right so um, so when the, a page or a block is full so we need to create a new block to write a new transactional data and how we actually chain them up or link them up between pages we actually rely on this hash so if you look at the diagram um, at the bottom of it there's a PRE in fact it, it means the previous hash of the block so um, in the beginning you know the first block block type 1 uh, it is a genesis block which means it doesn't have a previous page so you will see all zero and in the subsequent page or subsequent block you will find that the previous hash will refer back to the previous block hash so so and 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 how it actually works so you you keep on chaining a uh, new block uh, using this method and the hash is actually be calculated based on the data in each block so that's why each block of the data has a different hash value and it will be unique unless two block pages are having the same data which is very unlikely all right so uh, how we actually achieve temper proof is that um, if you want to change one of the value uh, in between pages all right let's say if you want to change some of the data in the block height two, the block number two um, it will actually change the hash value of number two so if you change the hash value of the number two so the block number three the previous hash which was previously point to the block number two hash the value has been changed and there were there, there are different value there in, in fact that actually um, says that the chain of this block is broken uh, there is potentially data being tampered so we need to do something about it all right or we need to flag a warning uh, or we should not recognize this uh, block data anymore because there is a, a temper being detected all right so that's how we actually uh, prevent temperation all right now talk about the blockchain network so uh, compared to traditional database so we keep the data in a centralized manner so we have one single point of uh, uh, single point of, of, of place to actually store your data and uh, this is how we uh, keep our data in our conventional system and uh, for blockchain we talk about decentralization and what this actually means is that all the block data is being distributed to every part every party or every person who want who are interested into uh, getting a copy of this database so everyone is actually synchronized the data in p2p man manner which means the peer-to-peer -peer manner instead of one single point of uh, place to pull the data you actually pull the data from multiple different places and and this data also be distributed to all of the places and this blockchain system uh, actually real time synchronize and checks the data from time to time so that it won't actually uh, uh, it, it actually wants to make sure that the data is never been tampered and it's always uh, a same copy for everyone in the network all right that's that's the, the, the blockchain trying to achieve here so um, <clears throat> the next slide is talk about the um, joint governance and data prevention laws all right um, what it does mean is that um, because we have distributed all the blockchain data to all the peers okay and uh, everyone has a same copy of the data and once you have the database on your hand which means you can audit you can check you can see you can do anything about the data in in in, in your blockchain i mean in, in, in your database so um <clears throat> so it becomes transparent right so it it, uh, it also can prevent data loss uh, let's say so I have 10 person in the network 10 persons are holding the same copy of the data and I myself my computer is broken um, maybe due to hard disk failure so I do not need to worry I just need to power up a new uh, a new computer or maybe a new, uh, replace a new hard drive and 
I can synchronize the blockchain data anytime I want. All right, because uh, I have nine others uh, blockchain, uh, I mean nine others uh, participants who own this, who hold this database, this blockchain data. Uh, the, the same the same data are still on their hand, right? So it won't happen like data loss, right? So everyone trusts it. So um, while talking about this, you know, um, cloud computing will become very important, uh, because uh, we want to promote this data being distributed uh widely. All right, the more the better. Uh, because uh, if you want to change the data in blockchain, we actually can change it, but we need to get majority of uh, the majority approval uh, or majority to change the data altogether. Let's say uh, for the same scenario, I have 10 persons um, who, who are holding the, the, the database, right? <clears throat> and I need to get at least six, six persons to change the data or the, to have the same version of the data in order to override the, the blockchain network all right so if we distribute this blockchain this blockchain data uh, to more participants to more people uh, it will actually uh, much more secure it will promote much more secure because uh, it will become even harder uh, for people to you know to bribe or maybe to uh, to do some uh, under table agreement to try to or change the data so it become much more challenging uh, <clears throat> if we have more and more um, users own this database and uh, together to govern this data all right and now uh, when I talk about why cloud computing is very important here is that um, Huawei cloud uh, is actually uh, provide a lot of different uh, places I mean for their data center so you can distribute your data to different different countries and and <clears throat> each of the country they can host uh, their own uh, blockchain uh, data and they get synchronized uh, for different places uh, for different people for different places so that it can uh, promote the the, um, the 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 speed of the the, the data uh, synchronizations and because they have this uh, 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 very good uh, network okay infrastructures right <clears throat> so um also uh, you know cloud computing it promotes scalability which means that or hey let's say uh, the the blockchain node that i'm hosting right now maybe there's some issue of uh, being attacked or being hacked or maybe the hard drive being corrupted and uh, it can any time to restore back all right and can you can prevent you can provision the new virtual server very quickly uh, and and synchronize the data and recover the data very quickly and also if you want to uh, make your blockchain network to be uh, even harder to temper you need to uh, provision more server you can actually use cloud uh, to provision the server very quickly all right so you have this flexibility all right to scale up scale down your servers uh, using this cloud and uh, the security wise all right we we, we we can um we can ensure that no one can temper the data yeah. All right, let's talk about mining. Let's refer back to the same scenario. I mean, the, 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 you, if you recall back the, the first slide, um, everyone can own the, the ledger data, the database, right? And who can actually write the data? In fact, we can only allow one person to write the data at one time. Um, say, even though we have 10 persons uh, have, are holding this database, but you can't actually allow everyone write the data at the same time because it will create uh, some it, it will go go crazy you know um, everyone try to write the data and there's no uh, time sequential time data being written to the block so we need to control only one person to write the data so how we actually control it is we define uh, rules uh, like uh, for example bitcoin so bitcoin actually de design a game you need to calculate um the the right uh hash right uh to actually prove that you have uh win the game because you are the first person calculated the the answer for that uh hash and then uh you only can change the block 
and write the block into the uh, into existing chain. And that's how, how it works, you know, we, we control one person write the data into the block. And then, <clears throat> and then uh, because uh, Bitcoin is a public chain and uh, everyone is concerning about um, the, the cost of it, you need to uh, invest in uh, strong hardware, I mean powerful hardware to calculate the hash and in order to change the data to maintain the blockchain network and that's and the founders i mean the the founders of bitcoin i mean the the, the origin the original designer he actually uh designed the way that whoever um find the first answer i mean who become the the miner uh, who find the first the, the right answer to change the block will be getting the reward the Bitcoin reward and that actually uh, incentivize the person uh, who do the mining uh, who actually contribute to this blockchain network and that's how they get the Bitcoin and they will then they will spend this Bitcoin and this is how it uh, starts right but for enterprise we do not need to do this so um, for some of the blockchain network you do not need to do mining you just need to fulfill some of the requirements and the rules that predefine the blockchain network uh, to identify who become the miner who become the person to write the block and chain the block uh, then this blockchain network uh, will be operational normally all right so yeah so uh, there are a lot of uh, different consensus algorithm available so like proof of work is like uh, what I mentioned just now for Bitcoin so you need to prove that you have done the calculations and you've done the calculation correctly so you have done the proof then you can uh, earn the reward because you are the one to write the data into the blockchain all right then there are others like proof of stake you don't need to uh, do the mining you just need to make sure that you have stake a certain uh, uh, cryptocurrency or maybe certain uh, uh, coins you know uh, uh, in, in a specific ways to earn the uh, uh, the, the voting rights uh, uh, to get voted you know um, to to write the data into the block right <clears throat> and there are some other ways like you do not need to do all this uh, you, you we can use something like Byzantine fault tolerance and, and there's a rough algorithm to actually um, uh, to, to prove that you know these data are actually uh, in sync in the blockchain network and you get some you appoint someone to actually write the data uh, into the block and maybe in a, a rotational method uh, or, 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 or whichever you can think of actually so we need to think that uh, what is the fair fairest way to uh, allow people to become the miner and write the data but for enterprise application, we do not need to do that. Um, we just need to uh, appoint uh, how we define the rule and who should write the data into the block at one time in, and, and it will work. All right. <clears throat> now, um, so after that, I'm talking about uh, 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 consensus, uh, mining, and there's a new uh, there's a feature called smart contract. Uh, I, I believe you have heard a lot. So smart contract is actually a small program installed in blockchain uh, and this program can be viewed by anyone, everyone can see the rules and uh, the conditions are written in, in the contract. So you think like this contract like a conventional contract, you can define something like uh, you know um, uh, who should make the payment, when should we make the payment and how, how this uh, things being distributed, how this uh, 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 fund being distributed, uh, things like that. You can define all this in smart contract, and everyone can see it. If if uh, the person who who are happy with your contract and want to use it and want to join it, then he can happily just join it because this blockchain thing is really open. All right, and smart contract can be used in many different applications. Like we can do tokenizations. Tokenization means that you want to. Uh, maybe on your hand you have something very uh, valuable uh, and you want to uh, tokenize it which means you want to use some kind of a tools to track this value and you want to get this value be traded 
all right so you can do this with tokenization and securitizations are quite similar to tokenization just that um, you want to do something like securities for some for security for applications the security here means like um, you have something like uh, like an asset all right uh, you want to uh, create the securities of it to, uh, to, to promote you know um, fraction ownership uh, so you want to make something like an electronic equity uh, or some smart equity kind of system then you can use smart contract to do that <coughs> then for tracking um, <coughs> you can think of like you know because this is a smart contract right so you you can define the rules how this data been written to the smart contract so and you can use this um, uh, data to uh, uh, to, to how you actually want to store this uh, tra tracing data into the, the blockchain so we actually use smart contract to define the data structures of uh, of your uh, data all right and I will, I will explain to you like what kind of uh, data can be used to track okay I, I will explain to you later certifications like you know digital certifications you can uh, I mean in, in the current aftermarket very uh, popular called non fungible token NFT is, is some some sort of like a digital certifications uh, for block I mean using blockchain technology right. gamification right you you know you can uh, use smart contract to to write games uh, is a new form of games that uh, you know some of the game items game values can be uh, traded uh, outside of the game world, you know, we, we can use smart contract to actually design it. So uh, as long as this uh, smart contract, what we want to achieve with smart contract is that uh, we want to remove intermediary. So we do not want a, a, a person's a middleman to actually get involved and, and um, it will actually slow down the operations or, or things like that. So uh, another thing we want to achieve is arbitration, which we want to remove or re minimize dispute as much as possible. Uh, we want to reduce enforcement costs, of course, and uh, fraud laws. You know, um, because uh, we have everything defined in the smart contract, we have everything fixed, so it will potentially reduce the uh, the, the fraud, right? And uh, also reductions of accident exception. You know, or sometimes we accidentally. Uh, uh, key in wrong value or maybe but uh, but <laughs> it also happens uh, when, when you want to make a transfer of token to somebody else uh, if you accidentally key in um, yeah you also won't be able to re re retract or, or recall back your, your, your fund um, but what, what it means here the ac accidents is like uh, they, for, for some other um, as use cases right it, not in terms of uh, value transfer of things like that right. so um, here after uh, I have explained everything about you know what is blockchain I'm sure you get a whole of what is blockchain already you understand what is blockchain what is smart contract right and uh, now you know Huawei Cloud actually uh, have a blockchain service uh, uh, a platform right so instead of, uh, of having yourself to um, design the blockchain network or uh, to provision the servers by yourself installing the blockchain software you can actually save all those hassles uh, by just using this uh, blockchain service from Cloud Cloud so Huawei Cloud actually use this uh, fabric uh, you, if you are familiar with fabric and uh, you can straight away write your chain code you just need to concerning you just need to concern about writing your own chain code you define all your smart contract rules that's it so the rest of the things like you know um setting up service uh, having this server be distributed to your partners and where should it be located you know you can save all these hassle yeah? and you can just rely on power cloud blockchain service to do all this for you all right and you can just simply provision a server with sim one single click of button you know and you can get a new uh, blockchain node already and you can invite your partners to actually uh, uh, own that particular nodes okay, to, to actually grab the blockchain data anytime you want okay 
So um, there are a few of scenarios that can be used. Like, you know, um, in the chart, you see there is the government can use it, finance, copyright, logistics, source, tra source tracing, healthcare, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of uh, applications can be used in blockchain, all right? I'll explain one by one later then. So after understanding what is blockchain and why we want to use blockchain, firstly, first, uh, we want to build trust with blockchain. Trust is the most difficult uh, thing we want to build among our friends or our partners, right? So how we actually achieve trust? Firstly, first is uh, the blockchain data is being synchronized real time. Whenever there's a new data being written to the block, your friend or your partner can immediately get it, all right? And temper resistance. So I has I mentioned how it, how the block hashes uh, block being chained, you know, that uh, way how we prevent the, 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 the your partner or friends temper your data. So you don't need to worry about that because it's very difficult to temper the data. And transparency, anonymity, so from the blockchain data, you can see there are records or there are activities happening within the blockchain network, but it doesn't uh, show you the exact who actually made the transactions, but you can see there are uh, addresses uh, uh, doing transactions, but you do not know who is, uh, you do not need to know who actually, and only the person uh, who are in the scope, only they will know. Uh, their activities in, um, in, in that. I mean, uh, who is the who, who are making the deal? Know who, who know the transactions. <laughs> the rest of the persons, like me, myself, or maybe some other anonymous person who comes in and look at it, and it just says, ah, there's a transaction, that's it. But he, he doesn't know who is it, right? Uh, and, and, and joint governance, yeah, so I mentioned that like, everyone get a whole get a copy of your database so I can see and he can see the, the data so everyone can govern it so you can pull the data anytime you want right so you can it, from all these uh, thing I mean these uh, uh, characteristics you know um, you form trust so after having trust it will actually promote efficiency uh, because we already gave trust among your partners and friends so you can actually build business alliances, right? Uh, you can eliminate intermediary, you can remove middlemen for your business, right? Uh, you can also prevent asymmetric information like you know, um, there are a lot of things if you if you if you are into supply chain uh, industry, right? Uh, there are a lot of time the the there are there are some kind of data that cannot be uh, review or disclose uh, efficiently I mean, to, to some other people uh, and that information is very uh, maybe valuable uh, but uh, it just doesn't <clears throat> share it out and people uh, may just need to wait and guess you know uh, I will be more specific, specific uh, for this uh, use case later uh, to explain why it's uh, this asymmetric information yeah um, for community, so uh, yeah, everyone in trust already. You can build your community. Uh, everyone can uh, 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 involve in your blockchain network. You can do something about it. All right, you can form community. Right next, um, which industry should consider blockchain? So I would say it's a lot of uh, industry you can consider blockchain, as long as you want to venture into uh, global market. Uh, or you want to uh, build your business uh, using this uh, community driven uh, method all right if you are into manufacturing line uh, you manufacture products and you are doing b2c kind of business and you are very heavily relying on community to build to to, to buy a product all right uh, to promote your product then maybe you can consider about blockchain so these are the uh, uh, this is just a few uh, examples of uh, industry which can use blockchain to do tracing, uh, to do uh, uh, crowdfunding, standardization, verification, loyalty program, polling like voting, you know, for government. Uh, you can do some things for self service, you know, when you have when, when after you remove some 
something you know your middleman or intermediary you know you can let your customer do some self-service uh, um, purchase or, or whatever all right so that there, there are the goods uh, the, the goods about the blockchain okay so uh, I'll go into more details about blockchain application first we talk about tamper proof so the market pain point, I believe, uh, you know, there are a lot of counterfeit products in the market right now. So it actually steal your sales. I totally understand your pain, and uh, it actually damage your brand's reputation, right? And then it leave a lot of uh, uh, problems to to you to to deal with. So uh, your customer purchase a counterfeit product, and they thought that this product is come from that comes from you, and there are. Uh, quality issues and the uh, customer thought is your fault right so you need to so you probably want to prevent this and you want to uh, uh, I mean want to solve this right so how you want to solve this so we we can try about uh, uh, getting the community to verify your product together so if you look at the next slide um, this is about community driven verification so you if you are manufacturing you are from the manufacturing industry uh, you can actually trace uh, how your products be manufactured if you want to of course um, the, here there is a challenge over here is that uh, you know you need to you want to get uh, all the person involved in your supply chain to contribute data may be a little bit of a challenge and people may think it's a hassle to do that um, but it is but if you successfully do this you can actually uh, build much more confidence for your customer to know for them to actually know that where and how your product is manufactured all right and you actually uh, gain public trust and confidence yeah so uh, looking at this diagram you know um, from raw material supplier, uh, you you trace like for one particular product, uh, what raw ingredient have been used to manufacture this. Uh, you can do the tracing by yourself, uh, and then you can after done the manufacturing, the the finished goods will be shipped to warehouse, and the warehouse will track when this product been shipped to warehouse, and then when this product been shipped to the dealer, the distributor. Or maybe to merchants, right? So the trail of this product, the consumer can check and audit anytime they want. So let's say I purchase a handphone, maybe, and the handphone has the the, the QR code uh, label with a, a we call it a digital certificate, all right? And uh, scanning this QR code will bring me to a portal. Uh, we call it Block Explorer, maybe. And you can see the trail of these uh, products when it's been manufactured, when it's been shipped to warehouse, and who is the distributor, who is the dealer, who is the merchant. You can get all this information, uh, and you know you know that this product is genuine, right? Um, and just now I also mentioned uh, blockchain remove intermediary. If you are a manufacturer you want to direct deal with your consumer which means you want to implement direct model or drop shipping model you want to remove distributor or dealership or even merchant uh, you can try blockchain as well okay so um, next uh, is about digital certification so um, this is one of the use case for ha, vaccination so Everyone is suffering pandemic right now and everyone talk about the COVID-19 and uh, we, we are talking about the vaccination certifications, right? So uh, I believe our government actually just uh, announced that the vaccination certification is actually uh, being implemented using blockchain so that it can share and distribute the data to all the, the health ministry of the other countries, maybe, yeah. Um, uh, you know this process is actually save a lot of hassles to, uh, to, to, uh, to open the data to every country to set up the service and, and things like that. So instead of doing so, why not you know uh, we we build this uh, vaccination certification on blockchain and you get 
the other countries uh, to straight away pull a copy of or involved into our this uh, vaccination blockchain network and that country can actually straight away pull the data from the blockchain and that's it they, they will get the data in real time right so that's the benefit of it uh, we also can trace you know medical report right uh, we also can design something like um, a user data being um, owned by themselves you know uh, why i'm trying to what, what I'm trying to say here is a lot of time like our data is not although it sounds like it's owned by us because we we are the one contribute contribute the data but in fact most of the time this data is being stored in a platform for example Facebook uh, so you like to post your data on Facebook right you take photo and then you share on your Facebook and this data by right is owned by you but uh, because your data is sitting on top of Facebook and you know you do not know whether Facebook will, will um, use your data for other purpose or not will they resell your data to some other party? we do not know that but at least uh, if we can use blockchain to track uh, the ownership of the data you may um, we, we may design a way like you know um, all your medical report, your vaccination report uh, is really owned by you, right? And we can design a platform where whenever there are insurance company, uh, maybe some health uh, institute, uh, some research lab uh, who want to buy your data and uh, instead of they straight away go to those platforms to buy your data, why not they can straight away engage you to uh, to buy the data from you directly instead of going through those platforms do you think this is a good idea right uh, this is one of the use case scenario we can think of so next um securitizations applications so um you know smart contract can do a lot of things right you know, just now i mentioned securitizations so uh, fractional ownership is one of the commonly used case here um here i have one um uh, application is for the uh, art industry so um, you know every art piece we can track them by using this uh, non-fungible -fung token smart contract we call it NFT NFT is like uh, we, we, we treat NFT like a digital certificate uh, label on the uh, on the art right and you know art piece has value right and art piece value is actually based on transactional uh, history, right? So which means, say uh, the art piece being sold at 100 ringgit, right? So you know that that art piece will worth 100 ringgit because of the last transactions. So if you are the buyer of that art piece, you bought your art at 100 ringgit. Next time when you want to sell it, will you sell lesser than 100? unless you are really sort of cash you want to sell at 90 or 80 maybe yeah but at least the art piece there are values there already because you spend your money on it right so uh, assume that you sell your art at, uh, at maybe like 150 so you earn 150 you earn 50 ringgit right and eventually the art piece will worth become 150 because there, there is another buyer actually bought at 150 so that buyer maybe resell your art again at maybe 300 ringgit right so you know the art piece is become more and more expensive and it becomes a tool or medium to store value right um so when whenever the the, the art piece has gold uh very high price it's very expensive but people still trust that uh this art really worth that much and he want he, he they, they want to invest in it but they can't afford the entire art and you want to uh, f uh want to uh, get involved into this uh, uh investment right so uh we can design like let's say this art piece has go up to maybe hundred thousand ringgit right now uh you can securitize it into a hundred thousand token you tokenize it so it means that each of the token is the is the fractions of the ownership of that uh, art, 
all right so if you you can actually sell this uh token to another person whoever owns this token is actually means he owns uh, fractions of this art piece so you can sell maybe like ten thousand five hundred or maybe uh, even one token is fine as well so um it's like equity you know uh, securities of these artists right yeah so it become like a crowdfunding platform potentially yeah maybe <laughs> so um next crowdfunding application yeah so just like i mentioned about crowdfunding right so uh, i have applications like uh you know malaysia is uh uh it has a lot of this durian farm and uh, this farmer wants to uh, expand and they do not have the fund of course they can opt for um, a lot of uh, these uh, different financial options to actually uh, get funding to expand their farm uh, of course uh, we also in, in i mean for blockchain you know we provide uh, another option for them uh, maybe a much more transparent investment method how it actually work is that um every durian tree we can track them uh, by using this uh, iot sensor right uh, something like uh, gps uh, we also can print a, a weather proof qr code from the trees uh, we also can uh, install this uh, camera around the farm uh, to monitor the, the the growth of the tree you know and uh, we can um, track like um, the fruits that are uh, been harvested and where this fruit comes from I mean from which tree okay you, you can get a whole of this information and you know these informations can be shared with your investor and your investor will will likely to invest and trust you because they has the visibility of how their fund being used and they can see the progress of the growth of your tree it will become very fun uh, to, 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 to get involved here and um, we can combine with fractional ownership like uh, what we introduced for art industry you know uh, you can fractionize the UN tree uh, investment uh, say it's a uh, maybe uh, investing in a durian tree needs maybe 20,000 ringgit for example so you can issue 20,000 token for each tree and and you can distribute this token to, to other uh, who are interested in investing fraction of your durian tree yeah so it actually um, create a, a very good liquidity options for investor you know they, they can uh, get in and out of your of, of their money or investment anytime they want right <clears throat> so uh, yeah this is for your entry next tokenization application so um, tokenizations can be used in a lot of uh, different cases like for example um, I have a customer from China uh, who, ha who has this license to do supply chain finance the upper tier chain like maybe you know um, the manufacturer uh, they, they place a lot of uh, orders to their supplier right or maybe you call it this uh, core enterprise core enterprise is uh, you can think like a, uh, uh, you can treat it like a manufacturer right yeah and this manufacturer place, a, place an order with a tier one supplier right and uh, this tier one supplier needs to uh, prepare the raw ingredient and some of the raw ingredient may need to come from another supplier which means the tier two supplier right and uh, so the tier one supplier needs to make payment to tier two supplier to purchase the goods right and sometimes you know the tier one supplier uh, is sorting of fund or cash flow to purchase more raw ingredient right so uh, so conventionally this tier one supplier he has to go and apply for short-term loan or uh, some SME loan from some SME loan to actually get this done but uh, what if we can design a platform 
uh, maybe for this core enterprise because the core enterprise already issue a, a, a contract so which means that there is a guarantee sales and um, we the contract can issue you know invoice oh yeah this is uh you know uh, there's a thing called invoice financing and this is what uh happening in Malaysia as well I believe uh in China you know what they do is um they use this invoice amount or the contract amount uh to tokenize it so that the tier one suppliers can use this uh contract amount the tokenize the, the token which means something like uh the own owing money right use these uh, credits to make payment to the tier 2 suppliers and these credits uh, needs to be recognized by some financial institute of course otherwise nobody will, tr will trust this token you know this token is worthless, uh, worthless uh, because it is issued by the core enterprise we need something solid right so it is better to get a financial institute like bank to uh to um to to pay to the i mean to to guarantee the core enterprise all right so the chart over here what you're looking at here is um they use the contract amount tokenizing is the token and the tier 1 suppliers can use this token to make payment to the tier 2 suppliers so instead of uh, taking the cash to make payment to the tier 2 supplier directly and the tier 2 supplier will collect the token and then uh, he can use to uh, pay to the tier 3 suppliers or he can actually use this token look for the partner banks or partner finance institute to get uh, uh, lending right? or maybe get payment all right? so uh this you actually um reduce the uh the the the, the time of uh you know uh, making the payment and things like that you know um the supplier do not need to suffer the the cash flow pressure so uh, i would think this is a very good uh, blockchain applications for this uh, investing financing right um, next slide is about construction supply chain. Um, this is one of the projects uh, we have done. Uh, this is to trace the uh, payment for construction industry. So similar concept for the invoicing financing, but this is uh, much more scale. Um, so this is a platform to solve this uh, uh, non-performing loan risk for bank. Uh, also the delay of payment for suppliers and also the asymmetric information among supply chain stakeholders so um so this now i mentioned like uh, one of the benefits that uh blockchain uh promote is uh to to improve the efficiency by uh disclosing these uh, information to all the supply chain stakeholders right uh, in the in the previous slides so how it works is um let's say the the tier one supplier right uh he he have done the job the construction job all right he have done uh, uh delivering the the raw material uh, to the contractor all right for example and uh, the the contractor have uh received the the uh the goods and and the contractor wants to, wants to make payment to the tier one supplier and tier 2 supplier is still waiting for tier 1 supplier to make payment to, to him, right? But uh, tier 1 supplier just don't want to make payment yet and he may lie to tier 2 supplier since that the contractor never made payment to him yet, right? And the tier 2 supplier do not get on hold of these information like uh, uh, the, the, the information of uh, the contractor already make payment to the tier 1 supplier he do not know that so he just listen to tier 1 supplier says that the contractor never make the payment he just wait right but uh, tier 1 supplier you know already got the money he just don't want to pay to tier 2 supplier right it potential happen in any industry of course not just in construction because uh, every company maybe suffering cash flow issue they want to uh, do some rolling uh, is very common so uh, we want to prevent this uh, supplier delay payment 
uh, issue or problem, pain point, or what I would call. So we we would we can use blockchain to disclose that there is a payment activity being uh, done, you know, in this network, and the tier two supplier knows that the any time you know the main co the, the contractor already make payment to tier one supplier and things like that. You know, so at least they know. So you know they can contact each other, say that hey, I know that you got a payment already. Can you please help to settle my bill? You know, right. Um, yeah, so this is one of the example, you know, uh, so we want to prevent fund misuse by any party of the value chain. Yeah, this is the, the, the solutions that we want to do. Right, next, carbon credit energy token. Okay, this is one of the tokenization application we can consider. Uh, you know, the green energy, uh, solar, uh, power generator, generations, uh, how we reduce carbon, um, how we actually track them, trace them. Uh, in fact, we can actually add value to the uh, this industry, this application where you know we can integrate blockchain with a smart meter. Uh, you know the mining concept. You know uh, everyone get uh, generate get get their token or, or coins uh, after mining. I mean the blockchain mining, not the the the, the metal mining, gold mining. Yeah. Um, we can trace like you know every smart meter, uh, every power generator, how much power being generated. Uh, we use this uh, meter to tra trace that. I believe it's already that there is already a meter doing that, and we integrate blockchain into it. So we automatically track the power generation and consumption, and every power generation will be tokenized, and uh, the token any token is being. Um, mine based on the how much power being generated all right uh, so editing token can be traced and audited can be transferred traded or pay bill so this is one of the example right yeah next uh precious metal okay precious metal like gold diamond you know this value can be tokenized because this precious metal itself already has a value so you can convert this value into blockchain token and then you can use this token to transfer and share with uh, you can transfer and trade it basically so instead of uh, carrying the gold running around you know it is like cryptocurrency basically so you, at least you have something to back your token value your coin value so the tokenization also needs to uh, prove that you really have that much of gold right so um, how we actually prove that we have to have a process you, you want to share uh, the process of how your goal being in custody and how they have been audited and tracked of course you need to get a reputable organizations or uh, some auditor company to prove for you so that your token has value all right and as for the diamond you know diamond uh, we can prove the genius of the diamond uh, there's something called GIA certificates. We can actually also um, use a blockchain NFT smart contract to to do these uh, digital certificates for diamond. And based on the diamond's value, we further tokenize into the token that can be used for trading and payment. You know. Right. So after you have heard so many applications, there are more and more, but because of the time limits, I can't really share too much. Uh, but uh, you you know you, you you can think of uh, your own industry, your current business model, uh, how you can uh, leverage on blockchain uh, benefit, how it actually can help your business. Uh, you can think about it if you need any advice or, or, or consultation for me you can feel free to contact me as well uh, we can together explore and discuss right and uh, prior to that you know you need to get prepared uh, if you want to venture into blockchain or explore blockchain there are a few challenges uh, firstly first is the regulations uh, right now we do not have a very clear regulations guideline for cryptocurrency or how we uh, define digital assets um, because blockchain, once we tokenize something, like tokenize the gold, tokenize the durian or whatever, 
this token can be traded globally, you know, they become more dollars transactions. It has this kind of uh, capability. So when we have this kind of capability, then uh, we will be challenged with, you know, uh, how we can prevent money laundering, uh, how we can prove the source of the money or how we can prove the source of your gold, your, your wallet asset that you use to tokenize you know how we can prove that and right now you know bank nagara security commission um they haven't really come out a very clear guideline yet um so this is one of the challenges that we need to be prepared right secondly is the cost so the blockchain server cost for all involved parties uh also about the guys guess you guess it is like the mining fee if you use public blockchain so if you use Huawei Cloud Blockchain Service, you do not need to worry about gas fee. You just need to pay the platform fee uh, to host the blockchain node. That's it. Um, and the talent, yeah. So uh, blockchain developer is way shortish right now. Even I myself are uh, facing difficulty in hiring a blockchain developer in Malaysia. Uh, I have uh, a branch in China, so most of my blockchain developers are coming from China. Uh, even in China, we are also sorting, sort, sorting out of uh, blockchain developers, so I need to uh, train in-house to get more uh, developers to build projects. And uh, lastly is the learning curve. Uh, it is very difficult for non-tech savvy person to save keep their digital assets. Okay, so let's say if you want to uh, tokenize your asset into token form, you know, so token form you need to you need to have a wallet to keep your token, and uh, this this token is very different from like a banking app. So it doesn't it doesn't have something like a username and password, and if you lose your phone. You can anytime get a replacement of your phone and then you just log in your bank account and you get your fund, right? Your fund has never been removed, right? So uh, for blockchain, if you let your users to keep their token in their own wallet and they have to do the own do their own backup and you know some of the people who are not really tech savvy, um, they may not uh, they may not consider, you know, do the backup by themselves. Uh, so they may lose their digital assets. So it needs some kind of uh, education right, to get everyone on board here. Uh, it takes time here right, to get everyone educated. So this is one of the challenge here. But for uh, enterprise application which, does, which uh, do this uh, supply chain tracing uh, kind of thing, which doesn't involve about token uh, then this is not a very big issue because uh, the, the, the blockchain application is really very transparent to our existing system it's just the way of how it store the data keep the data is a bit different and uh, it's really transparent to the front end right so um, in summary, so cloud actually offer flexibility in setting up global blockchain network. So this is talking about the Huawei Cloud Blockchain Service. Anytime you can provision and add a new node, new blockchain nodes, and you can share it with your uh, partners, your business partners, right? So um, so blockchain is a tool to form trust among stakeholders. So if you look at that diagram, uh, we are using blockchain to build trust not using blockchain for other purposes. The main intention of blockchain is to build trust and trust will promote efficiency. Right? So we also use trust to drive community to your business participation. Right? And we also use trust to eliminate intermediary involvement so you can cut all your middlemen. You can use direct model for your business. And traditional enterprise implement direct model using blockchain. Yeah, this is what I mentioned. So without the intermediary involvement, uh, you can uh, promote efficiency. You can enhance your operation. Um, yeah, 
and uh, we want we also use blockchain to enable enterprise move forward to move towards the globalization uh, because of that blockchain can go uh, borders right so uh, that's it so you know you need to think of you know um, how this blockchain can apply to your company to your business how to bring your business to the next level and if you think uh, carefully and you probably may design a blockchain application that may uh, disrupt a certain industry yeah, because of uh, how we uh, do business in the future I mean in this decentralized manner uh, it will change how we do business uh, so um, and uh, thank you for your time uh, joining the, the webinar uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to drop me an email or contact me uh, if you want to look for uh, some uh, advice yeah feel free to let me know and thank you for your time and I uh, hope to see you again next time thank you